Tweening is an alternative to the animation player node. It allows you to create animations when you don't really know what is going to be the start and the end point of it. You can animate any value with it. In this little example, I've decided to animate the yellow object's position. It's a simple use case for enemies to move to a position. It's very easy to make a move to or a follow behavior with tweening that way. Here's the object or enemy object that's following the player. There's a bit of code for the logic, but the tweening itself is only two lines. Here's a simple demo. There's nothing happening inside of it. There's just a character in its own scene. It's a node 2D with a sprite attached to it and has a basic script where nothing happens for now. We are just storing the global mouse position. The tween is a node in Godot, so we're going to select the character and add a new tween node. You can search for its name and add it below the sprite. The node itself has few properties. You can modify the animation speed, you can make the animation loop. Everything's going to happen inside of the script. That's where we can define a new animation for our character. So we're going to do that. In the script tab, we'll make the character move to the mouse position every time the user clicks. Let's add that bit of logic. So we'll use the input class for that. We have to use the isMouseButton pressed method and pass it a button. So to pass in the right button, we have to use one of the constants defined by Goto. Button left is for the left mouse button. You have button right for the right mouse button. And for now, we will leave it as is. And just like with any component, any node that's a child of our node with the script attached to it, we have to get the node first from the code. We'll do that with an unready variable. We can't get the node before that and call the getNode method to get the tween node. Once we have that, we can create a new tween animation. To do that, we have to use the tween node and we have two methods to interpolate or animate a value. We have interpolate the property or we can interpolate a method. We're going to interpolate a property. Before we fill in all the values we need for the function call to work, Let's look at what are properties. Properties are everything you see in the inspector on the character. So we can call the position, rotation, scale, etc. You access the property the same way you would with the set and get methods. If you haven't seen them, you use them to get a value. For example, if we write transform slash pose in the get method, we'll get the character's position because it's in the transform category and the name of the property itself is pose. That's the one we're going to tween. In this method call, we have a few parameters to fill in. First, the object we're going to twin. It's going to be self because we want to interpolate the character's position. Then we have to pass in the property. It's going to be transform slash position to modify the position of the character. Then you need the initial value, the starting point of the tween is going to be the current position. You can get it with get pose. Then you need the final value, that's going to be the mouse position. You can use the get global mouse pose method for that. And that's what I'm doing on line 10. Then you have the duration of the tween. It's in seconds, so if you input 1.0, it's going to be one second. The last two parameters are the transition type and the easing type. For these, you have to call the tween class from Godot and you have a few constants in there for the transitions. All the transition constants start with trends followed by the name of the transition. Let's use the back one as it adds a nice overshoot effect. The transition parameter is going to define how the value animates from the start to the end position. For a visual reference of the easings, check out the website easings.net. They are used everywhere, it's not just Godot, we use them for animation on the web as well. This website gives you a visual reference of the easing equations combined with the is, in and out behaviors. If you hover anything, you will see a little dot animate, so you can see how fast or how slow it's moving from one point to another. 
On the x-axis on the graph you have the time and on the y-axis you have the value you are interpolating. In the case of our little demo, this is the player's both x and y position that are animating at the same time. If we click on the one we are using, back with the ease out, you can see how the value overshoots the final point and then softly lands back on it. Lastly, we need an easing mode. All the constants for these are still in the tween class and they start with ease. You can ease in, that is to say, apply the transition at the start of the animation. You can ease out, apply it at the end of the animation, or do both. Let's use ease out so the character will overshoot the end position and then come back to it. And in order for the animation to play, we have to start it. For that, we use the twin node again and call the start method. And that's all we need to make the game work. If I left click now, the character will move to the position, will overshoot slightly and land smoothly. That's the very basics of tweens. Just like Godot's animation system, they are extremely powerful. You can apply them to any value you can find in the editor. So the possibilities are pretty endless. And if you click and drag the mouse in the demo, by the way, you will see you get a really nice effect with a smooth arrival on the character. So you can use those tweens to make characters follow one another in a game.